Hey, Skyler. Well, it seems like um, the recovery process obviously is going better than, than you thought it might to be able to be out there at this point. Just what's, what's the latest update on where, where that's at for you right now? Yeah, well, I'm, uh, I'm full going practice um, outside of uh, any contact stuff. So anytime we do seven on seven or routes on there, um, individuals, all that type of stuff, I'm full go. And um, honestly, just kind of progressing as, as we move through spring ball here, um, just trying to, you know, just communicating with Coach Kleiman, with Coach Klein, and our, um, our training staff as far as, you know, how I'm feeling, what's going on. Um, and just trying to get the most out of every single practice that I can. That I can. How's it feeling right now to make make throws? I know, like Coach Messingham was talking about, for instance, being a little worried about going from one hash to the opposite sideline. Like, do those type of throws feel pretty normal right now? Yeah, they do. Um, I've honestly been kind of surprised with, you know, how well that went um, from the get go. I think the biggest thing for me was just the the mental trust in it and being able to just rip it and not think about it. Um, and, you know, I'd be lying to you if I didn't, you know, kind of hesitate there at first at the beginning of a spring practice. Cause I mean, our first day of practice was the first day that I, I got cleared to throw to a moving target um, throughout my throwing progression. I was just throwing straight on with one of our trainers and, you know, was able to take a deep breath, gather myself between each throw. Whereas we get into practice tempo, we're going fast. Uh, it's up tempo, getting a lot of reps really quick. And, so, you know, that first week, you know, it was kind of just trying to feel for it, feel how I was feeling, communicating with the coaches. Um, and as we've moved on and, you know, my arm's starting to get back uh, into shape and it's been going really well. What have you seen from the guys that are behind you right now at, at quarterback? Who's standing out to you there? I'll tell you what, our whole, our whole quarterback room's been doing a really good job. Um, obviously, Will's getting all the, all the reps at the one spot with – with uh, with our starters during a uh, team, um, he was doing a really good job. And you can tell that that experience Will got last year has really benefited him a lot. And he he really used his experience and uh, the trials and tribulations that he he faced uh, to really better himself. You can tell he has a lot more confidence that um, he has a better grasp of our of our offense and understanding the ins and outs and what his reads are and being confident behind those throws. Um, so he's been doing a really good job. You know, Jaron Lewis. Um, I thought I, I think he's been having his best uh, spring since he's been here. Uh, I would say Jaron has the best arm talent on our our team, and I think anybody in our room will say that. I mean, he can he has a natural ability to throw the ball, and um, he's been doing a really good job. And then you got Jake and Max. You know, Jake's obviously new and and learning and going through a lot of learning curves, but um, you can tell he's a really committed kid that's that wants to be successful. Um, and you know, during practice, obviously I can't go during team, so. Coach Klein will go down to one end um, and I'll go to the opposite and basically be that that coach um, on whatever end that Coach Klein's not. So I've been working with Jake a lot, trying to help him as much as I can and help him learn. Appreciate it, Skyler. Thanks. Yep, thank you. Coach. Hey, Skyler, if I ask you about a couple of receivers, would you be willing to tell me what you think of them so far in spring ball? Yeah. All right, sweet. Uh, Malik Knowles, how's he looking? Uh, I mean, he's... Malik's the real deal, man, and I believe that since he since he stepped on campus. But you can just tell Malik is he has some swagger to him right now, um, and and is playing with a lot of confidence. And what I love about Malik is he's taking charge of that that receivers uh, room. Him and Philip Brooks both, um, as the two really upperclassmen in that group, have really taken ownership. And you know, if a guy drops the ball, hey man, give me ten push-ups type thing. Like it's it's a uh, you know, an expectation to go out there, perform well, and and get open and make catches. You know, and that that's what we need in that that room. And Malik's take taking full ownership in that, and you can tell that's carried over in his play as well as our entire uh, receiver room. How about Keenan Garber? Keenan's done a really good job. You know, I think Keenan's you know athletic ability uh, in football. You know, just feel is is very special and it's, it's been like that since he's gotten here um, the biggest challenge for him was just understanding our, our offense and you know not making mental errors and I feel like this spring he's really been doing a really good job of you can you can tell the game is just slowing down for him um, and he's playing with confidence and and he is he, he's a special player I mean he can get in and out of his breaks super well he's catching the ball he's getting yards after the catch um, and he's having a lot of confidence. So I've been really impressed, and, you know, the sky's the limit for Keenan. 
I know you didn't get to play as much of, of with Briley as you would have liked, but does Daniel look like a pretty good replacement at tight end? Yeah, uh, Daniel Daniel's uh, is a really good football player. I mean, you can tell you can tell he's played a lot of football and has a lot of experience just by the way he runs routes, the way he understands defenses, the way you know what I really like about Daniel is that he's really physical with his routes and and. Um, uses his big frame to get open. And, you know, he's, he's been doing a really good job. And along with all of our tight ends, I think Connor Fox and Sammy Wheeler have been doing a great job as well. And then Nick Lenners is coming back from, you know, an injury. So he's um, he's getting plugged in and, and seven on seven and stuff as well. I mean, our our tight ends are, are doing a really good job. Um, and, and it's a really competitive room, which is making them all better. All right. Thanks, Kyle. I appreciate the thoughts. Yeah, That's Hey, Skyler, uh, welcome back. And uh, I know you probably maybe you don't want to discuss the nature of your injury, but for a quarterback, how scary was that when you realized how bad it was? I mean, it was, it was scary, um, especially because it was in my throwing arm. And I just wasn't uh, – I think the biggest, you know, thing that scared me was just how I was going to be able to come back from it. Was, it, was I going to – be the same or, you know, what, what, what is this going to look like? There were so many uncertainties throughout that process and something that I've never experienced before. And, you know, with my injury, a lot of people said, that, you know, my doctor even said it was super rare that somebody in my position had what I, what I experienced. And so whenever I heard that, you know, it's just, it's just a lot of uncertainty that kind of uh, put some fear in you, but at the same time, uh, you know, I knew, you know, I, I knew I was getting taken care of uh, with, with some of the best doctors, surgeon um, that I had um, was very familiar with what was going on. And I really trusted in him, trusted our training staff. And, you know, I just I attacked my rehab uh, every single day and didn't even think about that. What if I'm not the same? What, what if this is, you know, all those, those those thoughts, whenever that came in my mind, I immediately took the time to flush that out. And I'm not thinking like that, you know, I'm going to. I'm going to be be positive about this and I'm going to come back better than I was before. And that's been my mindset since the day I got surgery. Um, and I think that's a big um, contribution to me getting back as soon as I did, because uh, whenever I had this surgery, I mean, the ultimate goal was to be back June 1st. And so, I'm, I mean, I really wasn't. I mean, I don't think the coaches or anybody was anticipating that I was going to be doing spring ball, but in my mind, I was, and I don't say that in a way of like, I'm going to force it and do things that outside of what the training staff is telling me to do. Like, no, I'm going to have this, this confidence to, to approach this rehab process that, that I'm going to come back stronger than I was before. And, and, you know, that's, that's treated me really well and it, it's paid off for me. What have you learned about Skylar Thompson through this process? You know, I, I think what I've learned about myself is this, you know, people say that you just never know when when your last snap is going to be. And, you know, last year, my biggest concern was getting COVID. You know, I was I was scared about getting COVID that that would take four games away from me and whatever the case may be. And yet alone having a season ending injury in my throwing shoulder, you know, it's just you never know uh, when your your last snap is going to be. And that goes with football, it goes with anything you just last one and uh through this process you know instead of uh you know caving into you know getting into a shell and shutting everybody out you know i've been been very open to just trying to make the best out of the situation and and using it to you know impact you know the people around me uh and just and not not let you know the given situation uh, take away from who I am as a person, you know, and and not take the smile off my face because that's that's a big part of who I am. And uh, I'm a very, you know, I'm always smiling. I'm always I'm in and trying to make the most out of every situation. And me getting hurt and not performing there out there on the field doesn't doesn't define how I can show up in that aspect of my life. And I just uh, embrace to to you know prove myself that. I can handle the situation and I can, can make the most out of it, but also impact the people around me as I go through it. And finally for me, what, was it an easy decision, a hard decision to come back? What, take me through that. 
Well, to me, it was an easy decision um, because I, did, I, I love I love football. Um, I love this game, and I was so you know after that Oklahoma game, I had a lot a lot of confidence, and I really felt like I was starting to really get into the groove mentally of of how to approach a football game and how to handle myself throughout a game to help to best you know fit our football team to put us in good situations to to win and I felt like us as a team was really starting to get into a groove and and start playing we were playing good football and you know so in saying all that when it all got taken away from me you know I just I believe that I still have my best football ahead of me and my ultimate goal is to play at the next level but that is not that's not why I came back I, I came back because I, I still feel like my best football here at K-State lies ahead. And and that that's I, I wanna finish on a high note uh, at this university and 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 leave it, you know, better than when I found it. And you know, I'm not saying it was it was bad when I got here. I just that's how I was raised to always uh, make something better um, with with your with your presence and uh, you know that that that's ultimately whenever, you know, Coach Kleiman welcomed me back with open arms and our whole staff did. And, and, and I mean, cause I wanted to come back here. You know, I didn't, like I've said, I didn't want to go anywhere else. I didn't want to go through that transfer process. You know, this is where my heart's at. This is, I love K-State football. And so whenever the coaches were very open to that, it made my decision really easy.